Good evening. My name is Kadria Ahmed, and this is Straight Talk. My guest today is a soldier who rose to the rank of general in the Nigerian army. Educated in Nigeria, India, and the United States, he ruled Nigeria for eight years and is arguably one of the most controversial leaders in the history of the country. His actions have had significant impact on Nigerians and theories abound about several key moments in his time as head of state. His previous answers to questions raised have done nothing to dispel the speculation. More recently, there have been contradictory reports about whether he supports President Jonathan's bid for another term in office. On Straight Talk today, I am very pleased to have with me retired General Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida. Mr. President, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you. When President um, Jonathan came to visit you here for, uh, not too long ago. There were reports that you had endorsed his you know, attempt to run for office again. Since then, there have been other reports in the papers saying that perhaps those reports were not accurate. Do you support President Jonathan's attempt to come back as Nigeria's president? First of all, I appreciate it the fact that he has come to visit me. And through the course of our discussions, I found in him a man who genuinely believed in the unity of this country. And I did allude to that. I said uh, I found him as someone who has a very strong belief about the unity of this country. Those of us who fought the civil war I still carry a bullet, so I have a permanent uh, reminder in me. Anything that talks about Nigerian unity, I get impassioned about it. So what I said is that the president believed in the unity of this country, and any other person who believes in the unity of this country should support the president to keep this country one. So, again, I ask, from your point of view, as far as the 2015 elections are concerned, President Jonathan has your blessings. Well, as far as 2015 is concerned, all the presidential candidates, 14 of them, have my blessing. The only difference is, and I did mention it, was that I have not been able to read what they have offered to this country yet, and I am going to do that. Whoever offered what I was looking forward to, I will cast my vote. While still on the issue of governance, you were also quoted recently as saying that if what you're reading in the papers is accurate, then your government um, was saintly compared to successive Nigerian governments, the ones that came after you. Can you tell me what exactly you meant when you said that? What I meant was... I, was, I am an avid reader of Nigerian newspapers. So when I read a statement like $16 billion spent for trying to provide a power in this country, or somebody kept under his bed 300 million naira, then it becomes, this is what I'm reading. If I'm reading, if what I'm reading is true, then I think I, we were angels. Well, because you didn't do any spending or because the level of your spending was less or because you didn't touch public money? I'm, I'm trying to understand what the comparison is. We did have a regulation. You can't, for example, keep more than X amount of money in a vault or in a safe for this is, you say, when you were in government, there were rules guiding... All governments. Okay. All governments, I, I will say, because we followed strictly the financial regulations. 
and uh, how it bothers my mind how somebody could put 500 million under his bed. I removed a governor for 300,000 naira, a whole governor of a state, removed him, simple, because he overspent what we have given him as the limits of security uh, expenses. So that ha that's how strongly yeah. you feel about corruption. Mm -hmm. And yet there are allegations that your own government wasn't squeaky clean. Obviously, the big story is the Okigbo report that people keep coming back to the Gulf oil windfall, 12 point something billion dollars that they say was squandered during your time. First of all, that report was set up by me. His soul rest in peace, Sani Abacha. And the term he was given to investigate the period 1986 to 1994. So this is a period of eight years. And when Pius, late Pius Okibo submitted his report, he said between 1986 to 1994, 12.4 billion accrued to the federal government. Um, nobody could deny that. Uh, out of that 12.4 that he talked about, 1.4 or thereabout was gotten during the Gulf War. Gulf War. Now, don't forget, if you had done your homework well, you would know that the Gulf War lasted three, three months. months. Yeah. So there is no way you could make 1.4 billion in three months at the rate of uh, $12, $14 per barrel. I'm producing about 800,000 barrel per day. The government didn't indict anybody. Neither did Okibo indict anybody. He was uh, an acknowledged economist. And what he says, X amount of money would have gone, it would have accrued to the reserve. Uh, the government has an option, either to go and put the money in the bank and say, yes, it is in the reserve, we paid, or you meet up some of the re re demands of the situation at that time. Considering that you ruled Nigeria for eight years as head of state and as president, do you take any responsibility at all for the state Nigeria is in today? Well, you take responsibility for anything, either good or bad. That's what leadership is all about. And so far, I think as far as I'm concerned, I take full responsibilities for all the actions that we have done. Let us take a quick break. Stay with us. Wow, you play so well now. I want to be just like Don Jazzy. Oh, really? Milk for you boys? Thanks, Mom. Thank you. You know, he even drinks lawyer milk every day, too. How do you know that? Let me show you. He's out there. Let's go play. Hi, you want to play? Calcium fortified lawyer milk nourishes the body and helps to build stronger bones. Now that keeps my family active every day. That's why I made the switch to lawyer milk. You too can make that switch. Lawyer milk, it's what's inside that matters. 